cover 3.2 and 3.3. It's over linear functions and functional notation, building on what we did in section one, which was relations and functions. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take that a couple steps further. So key vocabulary words are linear function and nonlinear function. A linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical straight line. That's very important. So the key part is straight line. It has to be a straight line for it to be linear. Hence the first th four letters, L-I-N-E, line, has to be a straight line. But it cannot be a vertical straight line. So any straight line other than this straight line where it's completely vertical is considered a linear function. So that means it has a constant rate of change. What's that, what that means is it's going up or down the same amount every time. Okay, and that's, that deals with slope, which we'll discuss a little later on. You also have nonlinear function, which does not have a constant rate of change. Okay, so it might start going up really steep and then only go up kind of steep or then go down, whatever. So this is not, this is not a straight line. Okay, so if you have not, if you have a line that is not straight, it's a nonlinear function. If you have a straight line that's not vertical, it's a linear function. So let's look at some examples of those. This says, does the graph represent a linear or nonlinear function? Explain. So in part A, we have a parabola, which is what this shape is called. And if you look, well, to what, obviously right off the bat, you can tell it's a nonlinear function because it's not a straight line. And if you look at the rate of change, it's going down, and then it bottoms out, and then it goes up. So that rate of change was not constant, so this is not, this is a nonlinear function. And to explain that again, you can just say that it is not a straight line, or it does not have a constant rate of change. Part B, this is a straight line, and it's going to be a straight line forever. It's always constantly going at that same rate of change. So this is a linear function, meaning that it's a straight line and it has a constant rate of change. Okay, so you can tell that just by looking at the graph. Sometimes they'll give you tables and also ask you to determine if it's a linear function or not. And this is how you do that. When using a table, a constant rate of change is when the x values have a constant pattern as well as the y values. If they each do not have a constant pattern, it is not a linear function. So basically, whatever's happening with your x values have to happen the whole time. Okay? And whatever happens with your y values also have to, have to happen the whole time. So if like you have the first from x, like if you have the first one go, your first x value is 2, the next one's 4. It went up by 2. So that means the next one has to be 6. It has to also go up by 2 each time. And then the y values also have to have a constant rate. They don't have to be the same, like if the x's are going up by 2, the y's don't also have to go up by 2. They can go down by 5, but all of them have to go down by 5. Okay, so an example, some examples will help you understand that a little better. So let's look at this. It says, does the table represent a linear or nonlinear function? Explain. So if I start on this, I'm going to look at my x values first. So from 3 to 6, I'm adding 3. From 6 to 9, I'm also adding 3. From 9 to 12, I'm also adding 3. Okay, so so far we're good as far as being a linear function because it's adding 3 every time. So then I look at my y values. From 36 to 30, we subtracted 6. From 30 to 24, we subtracted 6. And 24 to 18, we also subtracted 6. So again, like I said, you don't have to have the same pattern. It just each one has to have a unique pattern that is the same each time. So the X's were adding three each time. The Y's were subtracting six each time. So A would be considered a linear function. And to explain, you just say it has a constant rate of change. Okay, because the rate is staying the same. The constant rate for X's are plus three. The constant rate for Y's are minus six. So the second one, X's. 1 to 3 plus 2, 3 to 5 plus 2, 5 to 7 plus 2. Right? X's have a constant rate. The Y's from 2 to 9 plus 7, from 9 to 20 plus 11, from 20 to 35 plus 
15. So this would be considered a nonlinear function because it does not, even though the x's have a constant rate, the y's do not. They do not add by the same amount each time. So since y went 7, 11, 15, this is a nonlinear function. And to explain, you say it does not have a constant rate of change. So, I want you to pause the video and try these ones on your own. Hopefully you've taken a second to pause the video and try them. If you look, one is a linear function, so this is linear because it's a straight line with a constant rate of change and that's all you'd say for the explaining part. Two, two might have thrown you off a little bit because this is straight and that's straight, but this is a nonlinear function because the whole thing has to be straight in the same direction. Okay, so since these aren't both straight in the same direction, this is nonlinear, and again, you can say it does not have a constant rate of change because here it's going down, but here it's going up. And then three, the x's are adding one each time. And I don't have much room at the bottom, but the y's, if you look, are also they have a constant rate too. They're adding two. Three to five is plus two. Five to seven is plus two. Seven to nine is plus two. So the x's and y's have a constant rate. So therefore, that is linear. Okay, so that would be linear. And then with four, the x's are going up by one. But if you look, the y on the first one went from six to eight, that's minus eight. Eight to four is minus four. Four to two is minus two. So those y values do not have a constant rate of change. So number four would be non-linear. So that's how you break them down, whether they're on a graph, whether they're on a table. Um, the main thing is looking for straight lines and looking for their at their rate of change and seeing if they're constant or not. Okay, so this gets us into the next section, uh, which is 3.3 over functional notation. Okay, so that's the only key vocab word with this. It says functional notation represented by this right here. It's F with parentheses X in the middle of it. And it can be used in place of Y. This is very important because like in the past, you might have seen the variable Y. Now we were gonna see F of X. And like it says here, it is read as F of X. So that's how you read this, F of X and it can be used where y, the variable y was before. So like you have your y axis. If they're referring to that axis, they sometimes might refer to it as f of x. Okay, so you have to understand what functional notation is and what, where you might see it. So let's look at some examples of functional notation. So the first one says evaluate f of x equals negative four x plus seven, when x is negative, x equals negative two. So this is a very simple problem. All you're doing is just plugging in negative two where this x is. You can plug it in here, but this isn't like, you're not solving anything over here. That's like what your answer is. Like this, again, this represents y. So at the end, if it says f of x equals something, it's just y equals something. So what that would look like is f of x, equals negative four, and then in place of x, I'm gonna put negative two. And then we're gonna work that out. So f of x equals negative four times negative two is positive eight plus seven. So then we just have eight plus seven, which is 15. So that would be your answer for the first one, f of x equals 15. Okay, and that's just your solution. So then we do the second one. We have f of x equals 2x plus 5 when x equals 4. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. In place of x, I'm going to put 4. So it'll be f of x equals 2 times 4 plus 5. And then I know most of you can just do this very easily, two times four is eight, 
8 plus 5 is 13, so your final answer would be f of x equals 13. Okay, so you can try these two on your own. Pause the video, try these, plugging in those x values. Once you've tried them, you'll come back here and you'll see on this first one, it'll be f of x equals, you're plugging in negative 6 for x, so it'll be 12 times negative 6 minus 14. Then you're just doing the math, f of x equals 12 times negative 6 is negative 72. Still have negative or minus 14, so f of x equals negative 72 minus negative 14 is negative 86. Okay, and that's your final answer. And then the second one, we have f of x equals 6x minus 7. And they want us to evaluate it when x equals 2. So it would be f of x equals 6 times 2 minus 7. 6 times 2 is 12. Minus 7 is 5. So you have f of x equals 5. So those aren't too bad. All you're doing is pointing the x into the position of where the x is in the equation. And then solving. All right, so last thing we have to cover is graphing linear functions. Um, there's a couple ways you can graph linear functions. This will be the first one we cover, and we'll talk about more later on in some future lessons, some future lectures as well. But these are the three steps you can use to graphing linear functions whenever they give you um, an equation with it. The first one is make an input-output table to find ordered pairs. Okay. Second, you'll plot those ordered pairs. And then lastly, you're going to draw a line through those ordered pairs. Okay. So the biggest part... The, once you make the input-output table, the second step and third step are very quick. Um, but finding, making the input-output table the one be the one that takes a little bit of time. So this says graph f of x equals 2x plus 5. So what the input-output table might look like it would be something like this. So with the input-output table, as long as you have three points, um, that's pretty much, that, I mean, that's, three is good enough. Sometimes I like to make a few more just to be sure so I can extend it. Um, but this will be your x values, and this will be your f of x values. Okay, or your y values, the same thing. So make sure you remember those coincide with one another. So x. You're going to choose, here's how this is going to work. You're going to choose your input or your x values, okay? And then you plug them in to get your f of x or y values. And that's where your ordered pairs come from. So, for example, say I want to choose, and usually it's easier to choose smaller numbers just so it's easier to graph. I'm going to choose negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So when I do that, the first one, I'm plugging in negative 1, 4x. So 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 5 is positive 3. So that's what my f of x value will be. And then I just go through and do that for each of them. Plug in 0, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5. Plug in 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 5 is 7. And then lastly, plug in 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9. So now we have four ordered pairs pairing the x with the f of x. So first ordered pair is negative 1, 3. Next ordered pair is 0, 5. Next ordered pair is 1, 7. Next ordered pair is 2, 9. So I'm going to graph each of these on a coordinate plane. Okay, I'm going to have to move the video over just so you can see my coordinate plane over here. So give me a second as I move this over. 
for you to see. Okay, so, and you hopefully you wrote the, those points down. Our first point was negative three, one, or negative one, three. So when you do that, remember, when you graph points, you use your, do your x coordinate first. So x axis, I go over to negative one, and then my y value was three, so I go up to three. And that's where I make my first point. Next one, zero. So zero means I don't move left or right, I stay right here. Five, I go up to five. 1, 7, I go over to 1 on the x, up to 7 on the y. And then finally 2, 9, go over to 2, up to 9, that's my last point. Okay, and then all you're doing is you can use a ruler or something, but you are connecting that line. This is your last, or connecting those ordered pairs. That's your last step, is to make a line through those points. So I want to make sure you understand what this means. The graph, it says the original question was graph f of x equals 2x plus 5. So f of x equals 2x plus 5. So you have to be able to connect these. This equation is represented by this graph. They go together. Okay, and we found that by using our input output table, finding points, and drawing it like that. So this equation is represented by this line. Okay, that's a very important idea to be able to connect with one another. Okay, so that is what we're talking about by graphing and how we graph these types of problems. Okay, so there's another example. I'm gonna do it over here on the coordinate plane with you. see if it'll show up a little better than the pink. So the equation was graph, it says graph f of x equals negative 3x plus 4. So again, let me think about something real quick. Okay, so with this, we're going to want to, again, first step, make an input-output table. Okay, so I'm going to make this right here, and I know this might be a little hard to see just because we are on the coordinate grid. Okay, let me see what it's looking like for you all. Okay, you can somewhat see it. So just listen to what I'm saying more than anything as well, just so we can, so I know you are understanding. So we have X and f of x, or y, same thing. And again, you're gonna choose your x values. Again, I always choose the smaller ones, so I'll go negative one, zero, one, two. Just makes it easier on you when you graph. So then, I'm gonna plug each x value into my equation to get my f of x or y value. So if I plug in negative one, negative one times negative three is positive three, plus four, is positive 7. Okay, so that's my f of x value with that one. Plug in 0, negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 4 is positive 1. And lastly, I plug in 2, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, plus 2 is negative 2. So now we have ordered pairs. I'm not going to write them out. You should be able to see them. Negative 1, 7, 0, 4, 1, 1, and 2, negative 2 are your four ordered pairs. So I'm going to graph those. So I'll start with my x again. You go left to right first. So negative 1, and then up to 7. So there's my first point. 0, 4 is my next point. 0, stay on the, in the middle, up to 4. 1, 1, I go right 1, up 1, and then 2, negative 2, I go right 2, down to negative 2, and there are your four points. So last step, you just have to connect those.
and that will look like that. That will be your graph for this problem. So again, this equation, f of x equals negative 3x plus 4, is represented by this graph. Okay, make sure, I think that's something that students sometimes have a problem with, is relating the equation with the graph. This equation can only be represented by one graph, and it looks like this. And this line can only be represented by one equation, which is this. Okay, so that is, that covers linear functions and functional notation. Um, hopefully that gave you a better understanding of it. And like I said, the graphing of linear functions is something you'll use quite a bit, and being able to relate this to this is very important.